from San Diego, California, this is a One Extraordinary Marriage Show, where being busy is overdone, romancing is fun, and scheduling sex is taking the guesswork out of wondering when you're going to get some. I'm Tony DeLorenzo, your co-host, along with my beautiful wife, Elisa, from coast to coast and around the world. Thank you for joining us. It's time to talk sex, love, and commitment. Give us a call on the Hug Hotline at 858-876-5663. That's 858-876-5663. In today's show, we talk about the impact of nagging on your marriage and the strategies you can use to stop this style of communication. And I want you to think about this quote uh, that I found this week attributed to Anonymous. And everywhere where I say she, you can switch it out and make it he. But listen to this. She's not nagging. She's trying to tell you something. The only reason she's being persistent is because she cares. When she stops nagging, as you call it, you should be worried because at that point, she no longer cares. Mm -hmm. And nagging in marriage has a lot of implications. We're going to be talking about that in today's show. But we start each and every One Extraordinary Marriage show with a hug from you, from you, our listeners, who have gotten plugged into us and shared what's gone on with you and the show, be it on iTunes or on Facebook, or you sent us an email. And this week's hug is sponsored by Canvas People, and you can check them out at canvaspeople.com. Canvas People has a very easy, guys, I'm telling you, this is so easy. I was able to do it. Easy to use photo to canvas service that takes your favorite photo memories and turns them into a beautiful artwork for you to enjoy every day. And you know that we tell you guys, like we won't love seeing your pictures. We tell you to snap pictures. Mm -hmm. We tell you to make those memories. The problem is that most of us keep them either on our phone or on our Facebook feed or Instagram. Right. So what we want you to do is we want you to take advantage. They've got this amazing special offer for the one extraordinary marriage family. I mean, guys, they have over a million customers seriously all over the world. They take care of people right here in the United States. And, and the thing is they're manufactured here in the U S with high attention to detail. So here's what we want you to do. We want to get that favorite picture of the two of you, right? And get it off your phone and onto your walls. And here's how easy they're going to make it for the one extraordinary marriage family. You go to canvaspeople.com, order up an 11 by 14. You're going to get that for free. You're just going to pay shipping and handling when you enter promo code marriage. So you go to canvaspeople.com, enter promo code marriage. This is so easy, guys. We did it the other day. It took me all of about, what do you think, honey? About five minutes? Yeah. It was about five minutes. Ours is on its way. And here's the thing. It's free, guys. You should all, like next date night, snap a picture. Take advantage of the Canvas People deal. Get that piece of memory up on your wall. That's right. Go and take advantage of it. This is such a smoking deal for the One Extraordinary Marriage family. So this week's hug comes to us from iTunes. We were talking about just at the beginning of the show where, you know, when you send in your hugs, when you put up a review on iTunes, five stars, or, you know, you share your heart, it impacts other people. Because so many of you have come because you read a review on iTunes. And this one came um, just recently. It said, love hearing Tony and Elisa. Started listening in August and have been making my way back from the beginning. These two are straightforward and direct. You want to solve your problems? Listen to what they have to say to get ideas. And then formulate a plan for you and your spouse. And then do it. Right. Marriage is a gift. And my wife and I love listening to how Tony and Elisa share their experiences with us. And the key word there, and then do it. Formulate your plan and then do it. We give you sort of the framework. We want to give you that framework. We want you to see the insides of a of a 20-year marriage and still growing, mm-hmm. right? Each and every week we come here and we share those, those days and those tough times and the good times too. So we give you that framework. You come in here and then you set it up so it works for you guys because each of us are made differently. Each of our marriages are different. And so to say there's a cookie cutter, there isn't. Right. And yet you can take what we give you each and every week and use it in your marriage. Seven days of sex challenge is a prime example. People have done that over and over and over many times. And each one is different because each marriage is different. Absolutely. So Tony mentioned at the top of the show that we're talking about nagging. And we were having dinner with a friend uh, a few nights ago when this topic came up, specifically, you know, the impact of nagging on marriage. And before Mm -hmm. we jump into the show, I just, you know, there are times when we're using one of these words and we like to all have the same definition because it just kind of gives us that that baseline to work from. And so Mm dictionary.com defines nagging as continually fault finding or complaining. 
Okay. So the other thing that I want to say is that that's significant because a lot of the time, I think it's just assumed that it's the women who are nagging, the wives right? who are nagging in marriage. Like my wife is such a nag is actually an expression that's out there. But when you look at that definition a little bit deeper and you say continually fault finding or complaining, I just want you to know this can go both ways. Right. And as we are discussing this show, I said, it's really interesting because in society, when we hear a nag or nagging, it's usually meant as the female, like she is. But when we were discussing this as before Elisa put up the, the definition here, I was like, yes, but men are complainers Mm -hmm. and they can complain and they can continuously complain. So it goes both ways. Absolutely. And, you know, we hear from folks, be it via email or in my coaching calls, who say things like, I have to constantly remind him to do fill in the blank. Or it seems like I'm always begging her to do this. Mm-hmm. Or how many times, you know, and, and, you know, I've said this to Tony, how many times do I have to ask you? Well, actually, probably Tony said this to me, how many times mm-hmm. do I have to ask you to clean up your piles? Or why can't you ever, right? These are all examples of where it might be nagging or complaining. You could fill in the blank, you know, with things like exercise, fitness, taking care of yourself, health, sex, money, cleaning, the kids, electronics, the amount of time you spend with friends. All of these are things that people complain or nag about. And the problem is when the nagging becomes the primary way that the two of you are communicating. And here's why it becomes a problem because as most of you know, nagging implies that it's a repetitious form of communication, right? Nobody nags once. Nobody complains once because if you did and you got the results, then you wouldn't have to keep doing it. Right. It would end there. So there would be no need for the continuous fault finding or complaining. Right. And so, you know, initially nagging doesn't start out as a problem right? Usually we're trying to, we're trying to communicate some disconnect with our spouse. We're trying to say, okay, you know what? This is bothering me and I need you to know about it. But then we find that our initial tact of communication doesn't work. And so we repeat ourselves. They begin to fall on deaf ears. Yes. Well, they fall on deaf ears and we use a lot of times we're using the same expression over and over again. If you have children, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Like, let me, mm-hmm. let me just relay this in a different relationship real quick. Uh, you need to take the garbage out. The teenager sits on the couch and doesn't take the garbage out. So you say again, I don't think you heard me. You need to take the garbage out. You're saying the same thing. And your teenager is like, uh, yeah, no. Right. I mean, and I, this is, this is an example. Or yes, I heard you and, and, I'll, and I'm I'll still get not to doing it. it. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll get, get to, to it, it or whatever. Like it. So we get in this repetitive cycle of communicating or trying to communicate, but then we get demanding sometimes, right? Like you need to do this right now. Well, it kind of sounds like a parent or sometimes we get mean or really loud, right? And there are no results. Because there's a breakdown in our communication, right? We've never learned those skills, the communication skills we need to effectively, effectively convey what is happening with us, with our spouse, within our marriage. And so we go into this continuous nagging, complaining, fault finding, and not getting any results because of that. And it was interesting in in preparing for this show, you guys know that whenever we're preparing for a show, we, well, maybe you don't know, we start doing a lot of research. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, Google is our best friend and preparing for a show, you know, whatever the topic's going to be. And so I, I put in nagging in marriage into Google. And it was amazing the number of articles that came up talking about how destructive nagging is in a marriage, because it's like, it's like when you're, you know, it's almost like Chinese water torture, right? This whole idea of just like the drip, 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 drip. That's how nagging is in marriage, right? It just erodes, erodes the foundation of the love that the two of you started off with, Mm -hmm. because every time a, a nag or a complaint comes, I'm going to use those words interchangeably in the show. You know, one person goes into this defensive posture, like, you know, the eye roll, the big sigh, and the other person, the nagger, like blood pressure's going up, 
anger, frustration. And so you just have this constant, like chipping away at the foundation. If you think of the foundation of a house, Mm -hmm. right? Every time the two of you are nagging and it's not effectively being received in your marriage, just think of it as taking like a jackhammer to your foundation and you just keep putting more and more cracks in it, right? It's, there was one article that said in some respects, nagging can be more disastrous to a marriage than adultery because it's the erosion of the foundation over time. Mm -hmm. That's significant. You guys, if we've got nagging in our marriages and I will be the first to tell you, and you've heard it on this show over, you know, those of you that have been listening for a significant amount of time, you know that I tend to have piles like piles of paper, piles of things that need to be put away. And this is on a weekly basis. Right. And, and Tony will nag. He's rolling his eyes at me right now. I, I am. <laughs> because, you know, when, when we talk about these, we bring up these shows and these topics, it's like, wow, okay, this still happens with us. Mm-hmm. We're not perfect, right? By any means. And the, the piles is one of those areas where, yes, I, I do. I, I'll complain about it. Um, and and we're, we're working through that and the strategies that we're going to be presenting you are strategies that we're using here in our household because there's there are two things to consider here if if you're repeatedly nagging or complaining to your spouse you need to be thinking about why aren't your requests being heard or acted upon right what how are you treating your spouse that they basically have you know cotton in their ears and they can't or they won't engage with you in this form of communication, right? Why, why isn't it being heard? Mm -hmm. That's something that you need to ask yourself as the nagger. Now, if you're the one being nagged, you also need to take stock of the situation and say, what is my spouse really trying to tell me? What is the underlying problem? What action do I need to take? Right? Because you don't enjoy it. And I mean, I'm the first person to raise my hand. When Tony brings up the piles, there is a part of me that's like, okay, yeah, he's just, you know, there we go. The piles again. Right. I mean, that's the dynamic that we're talking about in nagging in marriage. Mm -hmm, And there have been seasons in our marriage where to, you know, when Tony, like early on in the one extraordinary marriage show, you all would have heard about Tony just like crazy on his bike. Right. Like he'd be gone Saturdays and Sundays. He'd be up early doing all this kind of stuff. And I'm finally like, Hey dude, can you spend a little time with us, your family? Cause I'm starting to feel like the bike is more important than me. And that went on for quite some time. Oh yeah. You know, and, and as, as we discuss this, I think the big thing that comes to me that I find is our spouse sees our blind spots. Mm, that's good. That we're missing. And in their nagging or complaining, they're going, look it, I see a blind spot that you don't. Now, it's up to us to, to go, I trust you enough to say, okay, yeah, you see that? And I need to address that blind spot. Too often, and I can raise my hand here, we don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. from our spouse, our trusted spouse, somebody that we said, I do to somebody we said, I'm going to love and have and to hold you for the rest of my life. And so when we, when we say, when we don't hear them, when we don't allow them to speak into our lives, that blind spot just continues to get bigger and they continue to address it more and more. And as Elisa said, we like to then put up our defenses Mm -hmm. because we don't want to be called out. Right. It's not comfortable to have to change, right? It's not comfortable to have to take responsibility. We like, we like being just in our our comfort zone, right? And so nagging in marriage is really a symptom of disconnect between the two of you. There's something that is not being conveyed and there's something that's not being received, right? And so when you have this dynamic, we have to arrest it. It's what we've been talking about specifically because of my piles, but of other things in our marriage. Well, nagging can also happen. Hey, in your sex life. Oh yeah. Right. That's a big one. You're, you're nagging because you're, or you're complaining. Like we never have sex. We never do. Or it you anymore. always want to have sex. Or you always want to have sex. You know, so there's a, a, an example that I think many of us can relate to mm-hmm. in marriage. 
And how are we going to use effective communication so that the nagging and the complaining don't continue to chip away at our marriage? Because it's, you know, the, the, the quote Elisa said at the top of the show, I think we need to hear that last part again because it says when she or he stops nagging, as you call it, you should be worried because at that point, she or he no longer cares. And that is truth. Well, Elisa and I have been around many a couples, many a people. She has coached many of clients where the, the one spouse is going, yeah, you know, she would tell me this, she would tell me this, she would tell me this, and then nothing. Mm-hmm. I will oh. tell you that when the nagging stops, completely, dis- if you disregarded that quote and you only heard what I'm going to say right now, when the nagging stops, you better be scared. Mm-hmm. Because your spouse no longer cares about you. And that's the truth. And it's, and it's sad. And I know it's not what you want to hear right now. And yet, I hope that this is a wake-up call. Mm-hmm. This is a wake-up call for you to go, oh my gosh. You know, oh my gosh. Because if you don't do something, if you don't start taking action in your marriage right now, you're going to live a marriage, most likely, that has no love in it. Mm-hmm. Or you're going to get a divorce, separation, something. Because your, your spouse is done. They, they've said everything. They, they've brought it up to you as much as you can. You, you've turned them down time and time mm-hmm. again. You've rejected them. You rejected them once and again and again. And we did a show about rejection some time back. And rejection is just as painful as being cut physically, mm-hmm. as being hurt physically, that, that rejection. So you're constantly rejecting your spouse, rejecting your spouse. And they're like, I'm done. And I'll put it, I'll, I'll, I'll grab that show because that show on rejection, these two, mm-hmm. they, they, they go hand in they hand. They go hand in hand. Right. Because when, you know, a lot of times when somebody's been nagged and they think, oh, they've stopped nagging me. Sweet. This doesn't bother them anymore. Well, you're right. It doesn't bother them anymore because they've checked out. Right. It's not like they've come to this amazing epiphany and they're like, you know what? In our case with the piles, Elisa, I will live with your piles. Just, you know, pile up all around the house. No. That would not be the case in my marriage because I know the way Tony's wired. If he suddenly stopped talking about my piles or, you know, and I hadn't done anything, it would be a very, very scary moment in our marriage. And that's, that's why we're doing this show. You guys, we're doing the show because we know how pervasive nagging is in marriage. And, and, you know, we're talking about the piles and we're, you know, we're talking about some of these things that are maybe a little lighter. Maybe you don't think they're as big, but you know, it could be, it could be, you know, things sexually in the bedroom. Well, we've had that in our own bedroom. Yeah. Until we were able to overcome ourselves and get over ourselves with the 60 Days of Sex Challenge. Which was a huge turning point for us. And then leading into the intimacy lifestyle and the seven days of sex challenges that we've done, we had to get over ourselves and that complaining and that nagging that happened regularly around our sex lives stopped. Because real quick, this was the nag in our sex life. You never want to have sex with me. That was Tony. Mm Mm-hmm. And I, and then my whole thing would be like, oh my gosh, you always want to have sex, right? And you know, and so it was just this like we're both nagging and complaining about the same thing. And what happened? Neither one of us was taking a look in the mirror and going, "Where's the breakdown here?" Right. Where's the break? Like, what am I not conveying, or what am I? Where am I not taking action in my own marriage? Where Where are we not working as a team? Right. And that's. We want to get into some strategies here that you all can take into your marriage this week, because if we can get to a point where we minimize the nagging and replace it with effective communication, I don't even want to minimize. I mean, I would love to see nagging eradicated from marriage. The reality is that we're human and we get tired and frustrated and things like that. So I'm not sure we can completely, completely wipe it out. But if we could take where you are today Mm -hmm. and even cut it in half. What difference would that make in your marriage? Huge. Right? It, 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 would, it would change how the two of you relate to one another. It would change how you look at your spouse. But before we get into those strategies, I just want to remind you guys, make sure you go to canvaspeople.com. Order your free 11 by 14. Get those date night pictures up on the wall. In fact, if you guys are going out this week, snap a picture. Go to canvaspeople.com. Use promo code marriage. Get it ordered. And then before next date night, present it to your spouse. There you go. Rock their world. What a cool way to romance. 
guys, I, it's free. You just pay shipping and handling. Make sure you get you get yours today at canvaspeople.com. So the first thing that you guys got to figure out is what are you nagging each other about, right? Because it's become such a, a mode of communication in marriage that you're almost just complaining about complaining, right? right? You know, is it, is it something that really bothers you? Because sometimes when nagging invades a marriage, it just becomes how you relate to each other. You may not even really think about what you're nagging about. Like, oh, I always tell him to pick up his socks, right? Or, or you know, I mean, I, I've, I've worked with couples where the laundry doesn't quite get into the hamper. And so every day she's telling him, get your clothes in the hamper. Okay, is that a really big deal? Or is it just that this is the repetitive cycle that we're on? You've got to figure out, is this really, is what you're nagging about, is it life or death? <laughs> or is it just something that you've gotten so comfortable fighting about, right? And part of what needs to happen you know, when we get behind these mics every day or every day, every week, this is time that Tony and I talk, right? We have set aside this time early in our marriage. This was the only time that we set aside to talk when we early in one extraordinary marriage, right? But what happened is here we would work through our problems. And then what happened is we started setting aside a specific time each week to clear the air, right? If you find that nagging is pervasive in your marriage, it's because you aren't setting aside time to talk about what's going on in your marriage. Yeah. And I also want to bring up two other shows that you need to listen to the emasculated man. And she's not your mother. Ooh, those are good ones because those two as well go hand in hand with the nagging and the complaining and the dynamic that's happening in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times the tone that we take when we're nagging is that of a parent. Right. Right. We, we start acting like mommy or daddy instead of husband and wife, instead of partner. And that's going to change how the two of you relate to one another. Because if your spouse feels like your child, they will act like it. They will rebel. They will ignore. They will do all of those things that teenagers and children do because they're growing and, and doing their own thing. As partners, our responsibility to our spouse is to communicate with one another. It's to listen and to be heard. And, and I want to encourage you, like when you find yourself having that urge to nag, you need to stop and evaluate your, your feelings before you open your mouth, right? If you're about to say something that you've said before and you know it because it's right there on the tip of your tongue, you need, to, you need to figure out what you're really upset about. Is it that the socks are, you know, outside of the hamper? Is it that you've heard one more time, I want to have sex with you? Is Like what is it? And you'd be surprised, folks. This doesn't have to be... I mean, you may be listening and going, oh, the socks, how, how that's how, so minor, so minor again, if that's being said day after day, after day, after day, after day, after day. Okay. That was annoying with him doing it right there on the air for seven seconds. Right. So think about that, you know, however many years and how that chips away mm -hmm. right now, uh, again, you as a spouse who's being nagged, you, you need to you need to see your blind spot and you need to stand up as well and go, you know what? Yeah, I need to just get those socks in the hamper. Absolutely. And if you're about to say something that you've already said before, don't say it. It hasn't worked, right? It hasn't worked. So, so don't keep repeating things that are just going to frustrate the one of you, you, and cause you to be ignored by your spouse, right? You need to choose to rephrase calmly identifying your feelings and the cause behind them. I'm actually going to, um, you know, I'm going to give you that worksheet that I tend to give my uh, coaching clients on using feelings. Yes. So we can just link that up in the, uh, in the, the show, show notes. notes. Sure. So one of the most powerful tools that I give my coaching clients, and it's really identifying feelings more than I'm angry or, you know, you always. And it allows you to identify the feeling that you're experiencing as a result of a specific action. Right? Because a lot of times when you're the one being nagged, you need to, when you hear that frustration, you need to stop and consider what they're really trying to tell you, right? If your first response is, I've heard this before, or why do you keep telling me the same thing over and over again? Uh, what are they trying to, what are they trying to create change in the marriage? Where, where are they trying to create a change in the marriage, right? If they're telling you it over and over and over again, 
it's something the two of you actually need to discuss and figure out why this is a problem. And you know, just like we talked about a few weeks ago about getting on the same team, right? And, and tackling your problems as a team. If you're hearing the same thing over and over again, you haven't solved this as a team, right? They've been trying to get something to you and you're not receiving it. So, and just like me, if the response, you know, like with my pals is like, I don't see why this is such a problem, right? I, I've told Tony that before. And when Tony was able to say, you know what? I can't operate in a place that has so much clutter, right? And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, so this actually impacts his ability to do work, you know, for one extraordinary marriage, for all of you, for our family. Okay. My action of just like, I've got paper everywhere has implications that literally ripple around the world. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying that all of you have, you know, like, you know, a worldwide global it, you know, ripple effect. What I'm saying is that if your spouse tells you this is bugging me, that ripple effect in your home is massive, right? Because if there's disconnect between the two of you and you have it within the ability to change that, if you have the ability to create more calmness and more peace and more cooperation and more teamwork in your marriage, would you please do so? Right. Yeah, nagging, nagging wears you out as well. It's exhausting, people. You know, so many people tell us now how tired they are, right? Like, oh, marriage is exhausting. Marriage is a lot of work. Well, let's start doing what we can do. Let's change the language that we're speaking to our spouses. Let's change the way when we hear things that we respond. Right? If the words coming at you are different, you will respond differently. If you mm -hmm. respond differently, then the words that you receive will be more encouraging. Thank you, honey, for picking up your socks. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for, thank you for working on the intimacy lifestyle with me. Thank you for like sitting down and talking about our finances, right? All of a sudden, instead of nagging, and that's what we have to replace it with. The final thing is that you have to replace your nagging. You have to create opportunities to encourage and uplift your spouse, right? We have to have our marriages be places of positivity and encouragement, so that it's not a place where, you know, eyes are rolling and huffing and puffing is going on in our communication, but rather we're like, oh my gosh, this person is my biggest supporter. This person is my biggest encourager. And when nagging is out of our marriage, that's what's going to happen. And people are going to look and they're going to be like, why are they flourishing? Why, do, why is, does everybody want to be around them? Why is it so amazing to, to just like be in their circle. You know why? Because they've chosen encouragement. They've figured out as a team how to remove nagging from their marriage. And that's what we want you guys to do this week. Take a look at those areas where you find yourself nagging over and over again. If you're the nagger, change your language. Yeah. Start expressing yourself and your feelings. And I was going to say, use those, use those powerful, positive words to uplift your spouse and your marriage. Words have power so into your marriage, right? Instead of scraping it out all the time. And that, and that's the truth. Mm -hmm. What words are you speaking over your wife, over your husband and over your marriage? That's, that's it. You guys, right? That's at the end of the day, our marriages need to be a place where positivity is spoken, right? Nagging, complaining, all of that is just going to erode the fabric of your marriage. It's going to chip away at that foundation. Just think of every nag as, you know, another sledgehammer to the foundation of your marriage. You wouldn't constantly be breaking up the foundation of your home. You wouldn't. Right. It would become unsafe. Same thing happens in your marriage. So get on the same page as a team. Change your language and speak positivity into your marriage. Yeah. So nagging. It can destroy, it can destroy your marriage. And you have a choice this week to really look at what's, what you're nagging about or what you're complaining about in your marriage over and over and over again. And that's the first step, realizing what you are nagging about, what you are complaining about. And the next step is in being able to go through each of these that we talked about, these strategies that we talked about and eradicating it, eradicating it. Now, I'm not gonna say it's never gonna come back in, and yet you have the power within yourself and in your marriage to eradicate that so you can have a thriving garden, a thriving marriage. 
So let's go out there this week. Let's find out what that one area is in our marriage that we are nagging our spouse about way too much and eradicate it. Let's go after that. And if you're in a spot where you, you, you find that the cycle is continuously happening, I would highly recommend that you get on a phone call with Elisa, do a coaching call with Elisa so that you can come up with specific strategies for you in your marriage so that way you do not have to deal with nagging any longer. And you can find out more about that at oneextraordinarymarriage.com slash coaching. We love you guys. Have a fantastic week and we'll catch you next week. Love you guys. 